Shahnameh Stories Introduction This is a series of videos on Persian miniature painting by Zara Faridani Akhavan. Persian miniature painting takes its subject and inspiration from stories, and in particular from Iran's most famous epic, the Shahnameh, the King's Book of Kings. The paintings illustrate dramas about kings, princes and princesses, lovers, heroes, and villains. The first series is about the supernatural, which is the most fun. The supernatural is a major component of the decorative repertoire of Persian painting and epic literature, where it plays a dramatic and colorful role. There are fantastic creatures such as fire-breathing dragons, the mythical bird, the Seymour, which as you see is far more impressive in Persian painting than its cousin Fawkes, the phoenix in Harry Potter, and demons, or deves, as they are called in Persian. These videos present and tell the story of the deves in the Shahnameh. These evil creatures bring magic and wonder, and while rather frightening, can be decidedly roguish and humorous as they prance around, fly, and create mischief. The characters of Persian mythology are divided into good and evil. This conflict is based on the Zoroastrian concept of the duality of its supreme deity Ahura Mazda, who is the source of constructive energy, while its counterpart, Ahriman, is the source of darkness, destruction, sterility, and death. The main force of evil is the Div, who in the Persian epics signifies a demon, monster, and fiend, with the physical attributes of a giant or ogre, and can have supernatural powers. Cruel, bad-tempered and nasty, they are known for being rebellious and contrary. Vorune in Persian, which means that they will do exactly the opposite of what is asked or expected of them. This includes their preference to sleep during the day. They are not only vengeful, but they bear deep grudges and take revenge for mere trifles, and often repay kindness with wickedness. These creatures plague the world with their evil until Solomon put a spell on them and brought them under control. The word itself is derived from Deva in the ancient Zoroastrian Avestan language, which despite its meaning of a being of shining light, actually refers to a supernatural being of a rather disagreeable nature. Many Persian stories come from the Shahnameh, where we will come across these Deves, who are, as in all epic tales, the anti-hero. The demon or Deve that we are going to talk about, though, is not the one we think of in English. Although the earlier Deves are rather scary looking, they are definitely not as horrifying as those lurking about in dark Western tales of evil. Rather, our deeds can be called creatures of benign maleficence and more like naughty rascals than satanic devils. The illustrated image of the deev is often associated with the 15th century Central Asian demons of an enigmatic group of paintings signed Muhammad Siyah Qalam. The last part of the name, Siyah Qalam, or Black Pen, may have been a descriptive title by which these works were known. And since there were no surnames as such in those days, it was an apt description of the style of painting which was indeed carried out in black ink. This elusive artist, or group of artists, specialized in depicting somewhat marginalized individuals, such as musicians, 
dervishes and dancers. And with the collection of demons that are particularly well known, provide us with a most entertaining troop of lively characters. These hairy, wrinkled and pot-bellied demons display characteristics and expressions of astonishing and endearing humanity that developed in the next few centuries. What's more, you may be surprised to discover that you know one of them. You don't know him as a demon as such, but certainly as we look at its origins, we will see where our present day creature perhaps got its inspiration. Can you guess who the creature is? How about if I called it a beast instead of a demon or a creature? Here's another clue. In the Persian language, the translation of a famous film is Divo del Bar, The Demon and the Enchantress, or Disney's film Beauty and the Beast. Granted that the alliterated words are rather catchy, but the cartoon rendition of the beast does indeed bear a striking resemblance to the demons that inhabit Persian miniature painting. Did you ever wonder where perhaps Disney got the features to create its beast? The Disney beast is a composite of various animal features. The mane of a lion, the beard and head of a buffalo that includes a variety of horn shapes, the brow of a gorilla, the tusks of a wild boar, the body of a bear, and the legs and tail of a wolf. But the resemblance to the Persian leaves is most striking in the face, where it has the same horns, floppy ears, tusks, and most importantly, expressive human eyes. And it is this underlying humanity that despite the bestial qualities, gives them their charm and renders them so endearing. Persian adives are tall and heavy with large furry and hairy hides. They are described as having dark eyes, chesh kabud in Persian, that are often depicted with dramatic flame-like eyebrows that rise over the small eyes, giving them a perpetually perplexed expression. They have a wide flared nose and a large mouth with thick pendulous lips that ripple out, giving an illusion of mirth as their sharp fangs poke out in wicked glee. They are often spotted and can be different colours, such as black, white and grey, and bright colours, such as blue, pink, green, yellow, orange and red. They live in deep, dark caves and hide at the bottom of wells, where they spend most of the daylight hours. Despite their grotesque appearance and appalling character, they are rather dainty and often heavily bejeweled with bells and pom-poms to match their necklaces, belts, bracelets, anklets and armbands. This curious characteristic is a feature of all Deves and seems to originate from the early depictions where they were heavily chained to keep them in control. Over the centuries, these noisy adornments have taken on a decorative aspect that changes according to their story, role and culture. The Deves' soft, flat feet can be long and elegant or rough, hairy paws. Although the hands and feet are animal-like in both the Persian at Div and the Disney beast, with sharp claws most resembling a wolf, the Persian Div is endowed with a rather alarming foot spur, and his long, swishy tail sometimes ends in a ferocious serpent head, hissing for good measure. They can have a variety of horns, ranging from those of a bull, elaborate antlers, to single curled outcrops between the brows. Some have wings and fly, 
although they often just apparate and have the ability to transform themselves into other creatures and elements such as the wind. Because their feet are soft, flight is their preferred means of travel as their sensitive feet bleed profusely at the smallest cut. They're often depicted carrying people off in their sleep as among their many obnoxious habits, kidnapping is a favorite hobby of theirs. They can be portrayed naked, but are usually extremely fashionable and almost always dressed up in layered haute couture, flowing and colorful tunics resembling a flared skirt. As we will see in some examples where their private parts are in ample view, they are not partial to underwear. Within these general traits, embellished with flamboyance and personality, according to the period, school of painting, style of the artist, and the taste of the patron, we find the div, the fascinating anti-hero of Persian epic literature. In the next videos, we are going to talk about the Shahnameh, meet the individual divs that loiter and lurk within its adventures and hear each of their stories.